Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our no shot run uh, where we're trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty without shooting a single shot or using a single bit of explosive. It's time to get Gertrude Kohler, an engineer, out of uh, Rescue the VIP mission. And I am in a good mood. It is a fantastic campaign and so far uh, it was just a joy to go through the ruin. Let's take a look whom we can take onto this mission. We're definitely going to take Hawkbite with us. Uh, Sane and Sue Cougar uh, seem to make sense. That way we can have two specialists with us. And three rangers also make sense. Uh, very much so. Let's uh, make all of the weapons available. We got a mine shield. We got our good combination of Medkit plus Skulljack on our specialist. And last but definitely certainly not least, uh, Roby. With a nice set of weapons. The gun itself doesn't do anything, but the iconic axe, the mine shield, the mimic beacon. Got three mimic beacons, a lot of mine shields, and we are ready to enter the actual mission. Here we go, guys. All right, we're staying alert for hostile contacts. Here we are. We started with the, yeah, we started with the VIP right away, and look at that. That's a absolute fantastic option for concealment. That way we can double check whether or not we're going to trigger. Ooh. That's not too bad. I'm not going to lie. It is a pretty tempting situation to throw the axe. And just get both of them down. Moving to position. Got a second pack over there. And all of this would already trigger. Are you telling me that this here would also trigger? Wow, okay. Well, apparently, we're meant to fight this pack. But I do not yet want to teamwork over. Oh, wow. Well,. Let's try to not trigger them for now. Confirmed. Good, even this here would trigger, right? Yeah, that would already trigger. You can see it in the preview. Trigger, wow, okay. Done. Heading to that location. Okay, well, it's really difficult to start when you don't want to trigger anything. Alright, so that pack is slightly moving. Let's hope uh, the mutant pack will simply move away from us. Of course it's not, which sort of means we gotta deal with both of the packs at the same time. And one of them already started to uh, to engage on us. Well, well, well. You can say whatever you want about XCOM 2, but it keeps you on your toes, that's for sure. Quick 
could try to go into uh, into either of uh, these, but uh, that would probably not be too wise. I don't want to lead with throwing the axe. Um, there are probably better targets later in the mission. It's a really messy start, to be honest. Probably got to use our Mimic Beacon. I say we are triggering that other pack over there. And then we're taking it from, from there. So this here could be our kind of Mimic Beacon setup. You know, luckily, sometimes the uh, the opposition is uh, stupid, and that place over there, right next to the gas station, that theoretically should uh, explode. Unfortunately, we have no one to take care of that, which means what we're going to do is we're probably going to use melee attacks to the best of our ability some nice little blade storming let's teamwork over to get some more damage going there we go almost got the specter down and we want to fill up our Focus meter, so Hawkby is going to get the kill. There we go. Solid, that's two focus um, right off the bat. Great, very good. And how about... Continuing to give Hawkbite a little bit more action. I would want him to stand in the very front when the mutant can theoretically arrive. This world is ours. Can't kill uh, the Codex with one go. So the cloning is sort of inevitable. But we can stand very much at at the edge here so that the mutant will try to hit us with its melee attack the question that i'm having is do we even need a mimic beacon still okay timing wise can't lose too much momentum here yes overall we're fine Moving up a little bit closer so that we can actually do something next turn. And of course the question is, should we kill this guy or not? Um, we're probably going to see one teleport here and one simple movement here. The simple movement of this codex would provoke the blade storm. Teleport of course does not. And I think we're fine. We don't need the... Uh, we don't need the Mimic Beacon, not yet. We could start softening up the Mutant. You know, that's definitely not a bad idea. With very limited ability to deal damage to him. So although the Comet Protocols here to soften him up might look a bit, yeah, wasted almost. I ensure you they are not. And just for full, um, for full uh, safety, we're also going to make sure that he's not going to take a shot into a flanked position. 
Yeah, he's instead going to use what he's always using, which is his little protective shield. Next turn, we got to deal with him. So far, we're going to be fine. Teleports down. Does the psionic bomb. It doesn't affect us, really. We're not using weapons anyways. There's the blade storm I was talking about. There's the parry. We have one more parry charge because we stacked it. And there's the kill I was hoping to achieve. Wonderful. So far, so good. Let's continue with Hogbite. Yeah, that is exactly what I was looking for. Hogbite gets a two for one. Wonderful. Maximum focus. And we're good to go. Now, next up. Let's get down the shield bearer. Gotta be careful here with the explosion of the weapon, uh, of the car. Very good. Well, not the position compromise thing, that is definitely not very good. Well, the clustering up on him and essentially getting him down. That was very good. X -ray down. Okay, good. Moving up. Get it done. Get it and we're taking some aggressive positions in the midfield here. Hogbite gets a little bit better position so that we can sprint towards wherever we're needed. And that's the first two packs down. Reasonable amount of cooldowns used. Yes, we've used some of our teamwork. And yes, that was unfortunate. But yeah, it was also a pretty nasty position to be in, to be honest. Let's start with concealment again. Okay, that wouldn't work. Damn it. Concealment is a problem from time to time. Let's move one of these guys out of the way. Copy that. This might trigger a pack. It did not. Wonderful. Okay. Quick feet is becoming our scout. Uh, we're free to take kind of that low ground here. Alright, blue moves all around. I'm all over it. And then a little sprint. Looks like one of them came back for more. Let's make well, sure to take it out this time. So much for the sprinting. That was a small risk that uh, that could have happened. That uh, was a small chance that that could have happened. And let's make sure we're using our Mimic Beacons properly. Can see both of the Vipers, but can't see the actual Viper King. Meaning this here should a trigger his reaction, very good. Okay, Hogbite definitely can see the Viper King. Bolt would deal some damage, but 
not all them, uh, not a lot. Yeah, I can't really kill this guy. Mimic Beacon is set, so that should not be a problem. 8 protocol to support Hogbite. As long as we're having a proper defensive position here, we should be fine. Yeah, that's even best case is not going to kill him, so might as well not try. No. The Mimic Beacon will keep us safe for one turn. Staying a bit further behind does not hurt in a specific case. Alright, Roby hunkers down and Hogbite is the last one to act, meaning this here will hit everyone and then it's the ruler's turn. Tries to bind, fails. Oh no, it actually shoots. Okay, fair enough. Tongue grab misses, of course. Shoots and fails. All right, cool. So far, so good. 7 to 8 points of damage. And this here would be 4 to 8. I rather would like to go with that here. And we're going to Blade Storm for a second attack. Nice little critical hit. Good job, Hogbite. And there's the Blade Storm. And that seals the deal. That's a good old FU. Alright, Roby charges in. This might trigger another pack, but we do have a Mimic Beacon, so I'm fine. Aggressively moving in. X-ray neutralized. All right, we're almost uh, there. Almost. On my way. Moving down to scout ahead. Good, very good. Not so good. Oh, come on. Hostile targets inside. The stress of battle is enough to get to anyone. When they get home, we'll have to give our soldiers plenty of time to rest. Good, let's really move up. Solid sprint, so that we're at the front line. We got two nice little skull jacks. Which at least for the one advent pack should be good good to go. Not a hundred percent sure how they saw us. Not 100% sure about that. Um, okay. Interesting.
This you will trigger an, uh, another pack. But I'm generally fine with it. Oh, wow. I was honestly not expecting him to even be hurt. Come on, trigger the other pack. Yeah, there we go. Wow. That is surprising. I mean, it was a sprint, so the chance of him hitting was uh, relatively low. Good. What would the other combat protocol look like? No hit uh, there. But we know there is a mech right up there, right? All right, so Cougar moves up. Still can't hit anyone. So we're instead probably just going to heal up. For a melee attack does not sound like a super good idea. Instead, let's move a tiny bit further. Can't really hit the mutant. We can try that next turn. What I would want to do is I'd like to hit something up here. Something along the lines of this. That'll keep the super heavy mech busy. And our only target at this point is the mutant. So we get to get into a better position. In terms of dealing with all this crap here. Let's maybe move up back here here yeah that is still flankable here it's flankable over there could move up all the way up here essentially stating that that we're going to hit the mac and that we want to finish it next turn we go to here and the nice part about the mutant uh, about uh, these uh, sectors is they are going to be one shots so Let's go to here. Still reasonably well covered. And we can kill the sector, hopefully. Okay, Gertrude here needs to chill. Like a lot. And... Not the flashiest of all moves. First one to admit that. And I'm a bit miffed about my decision to essentially run in and take my chance. If you do that, you gotta live with the consequences if it just doesn't work out. Suppression. Yes, no, maybe, grenade. Overwatch, okay. Good. 
Interesting. Instead of using mind spin, he just straight out assumes uh, that we cannot be mind controlled. Okay, fair enough. I like the prospects of just charging in and getting this guy down. Question is, how do we deal with the mutant? Oh, I do. I know exactly how we can deal with him. Throw the axe into his face. By the way, we are not triggering Overwatch, right? Yes, we're not. Wonderful. So this one here should be a relatively easy concept. Axe right into the face. That really relatively easy concept did absolutely not work out like I was hoping it would. That's it. Well. I like this school mine. What I don't like is uh, the mutant over here. Mutant is a problem. Might as well take another hit with um, Hogbite. He already got hit pretty badly. Right, that did not trigger. We can put a parry up here. Now the question is, uh, what are we going to do with the melee? Uh, with the melee defense of the mutant? That's going to be a real fun, isn't it? Certainly we do have another Mimic Beacon to keep him busy, but in the meantime, we are in a tough spot. Could um, Comet Protocol him, but that's, yeah, suboptimal. I really want to school mine. I'm afraid though that uh, Johnny here might take a severe beating. Their aim isn't so good. Uh, but I don't have other means of really interrupting him for now. At least none that I'm aware of. Of course, we can try to slash him. But that is prone to a counter-attack as well. Definitely going to hunker down. So what we could do is... Johnny takes the aid protocol. Again, not the best play, but... Sometimes you have to select from a lot of suboptimal plays and select the least suboptimal one, which I feel this whole situation is an example of. Luckily, he missed. All right, are we going for a facility lead? Or are we going for Intel? I like the idea of a facility lead, but we're not really forced to get that. Intel is good as well. Could have gotten a facility lead, that's okay. No, we're definitely not going to do that. Let's also not cluster up too much. If I stay here, unfortunately, the two downstairs cluster. If I stay up here, only the two upstairs cluster. But for the rockets, it's do it doesn't matter. Even though he were parrying them, we would still be blown through the floor. So taking this guy all around is a really bad idea.
All right, so this here should be nicely visible by both of them. And the problem here is if the Mimic Beacon is not fully visible, this is going to lead to an explosion. The explosion will deal more damage. I really don't feel like taking much more damage. On the other hand, we're running low on time, so I gotta take some chances. Spl spreading them out so much so that if he chooses to use rockets, he only can hit two and not three. He decides to go for the beacon. Right, so we could kill this guy here. That'll be an option. The other option is to simply deal with the mutant and get the bullshit. Get the bullshit out of the system. There's a 50-50 chance that he will uh, massively retaliate. There we go. That was expected. He still has an overwatch. Unfortunately, the, the retaliation did not cancel that. So yeah, we're... We're getting shafted here. I do not have much counterplay left over. Problem is if I move in. At almost all of the positions, my combat protocol will trigger his, um, his reaction. Plus, we sort of needed in order to deal enough damage. I wanted Hogbite to still be ready. One thing that I could do is I could do that here. But he will get his shot, and that's what I wanted to prevent. Mutants are just a bane for this run. Let's try to not get hit. There's the shot. I think we can barely kill him with our retaliation strike, with our blade storm. Yeah, can't, just can't go down there. Lots of rangers and all of them are sort of useless because we can't engage with the mutant and they don't have blade storm yet there's the blade storm and of course minimum damage mm. ah, not the best mission guys that is frustrating to see just how much the mutant can control our position. We can kill him now with our last remaining uh, enemy protocol. But that fight overall, I was absolutely not happy with how that turned out. Number one, the hit um, that Hogbite received at the very beginning. I mean, yes, it can happen. Chance was low, but still, it was frustrating. And then secondly, just the amount of bullshit to go through with this mutant.
Good, he got some LRM4 at least, and a little bit of loot. Not too bad. Not fantastic, uh, not fantastic either. Before we make a move, uh, let's Moving. put the important people into the target zone. And we're getting out of here even without the last pack. There's no need to get too greedy. Halo. Ooh, Halo is still disoriented. All right. Getting our second uh, focus over here. Yeah, we got a shot, a uh, pretty severe shot on uh, on Hawkbite. And we got a retaliation attack because I didn't want yet another attack on to Hawkbite. Good, getting out of here. I think everybody is able to leave, right? Yeah. And Hawkbite will get up here as well. Okay, cool. Well, not the cleanest mission. I'm going to be self-critical here and say that was rather not up to the standard that I wanted to play. But nonetheless, we made it out alive without any losses. A little bit of a wounding there. Uh, the, the one that annoys me the most is probably Hawkbite because he will, for 9 points of damage, he'll probably sit in the med bay for 20 days. All right, so we landed. Let's see. Hawkbite only took uh, took it for seven days. Bravely wounded for seven days. I take that. No problem. We got a promotion on Zoo Hooper. Yes, please. Get the field medic running. And yeah, Halo took one for the team. I get it. That was unfortunate. Having successfully recovered one of Dr. Ballin's genetically modified test But we got ourselves an engineer and a hundred intel. That's exactly what we needed. We wanted faster excavation down here. Greater understanding of just how she managed to accomplish these rapid changes. And we finally killed the Viper King as well. So that's a big plus. Massive one. Just gotta make contact and get to Western Europe. Heal faster, Intel. Don't need power. The alloys are okay as well. Intel, we're pretty much very good on Intel. So for now, let's do like a few days of healing. And once we got our team back on track, we can start expanding more. Wonderful. Psionics are continuing, this time with Insanity as a nice rider effect. I want Nullens. Hmm. I think we're going to go for uh, the Life Leech, although... Let's go with Rupture. Still not 100% what I want. Uh, we want the Null Lens in order to be able to invade uh, the uh, the hideout. And that's a fantastic item. Nanoscale Vase also has a med kit uh, built in, so that's not uh, not bad at all. Got some more days for Hogbite. And... Yeah, let's do some negative trade recovery. That is good. And we can also try to improve uh, the bond. We can always interrupt that if 
we need to go into a mission and need more soldiers. For now, we're fine. Got Solus, uh, that is fantastic. And there's the Nullens we were waiting for. So that is one out of two of them. Who knows uh, how to cast the Nullens? Maximilian Richter has finished. And now it's only Hawkbite who's missing. One or two more days. I never regretted getting Hawkbite back on track because he's really care. There we go. He's really carrying the run, which may means now we can finally make contact. All of our available communications capacity. And that also means we have an access to another facility, this time one with the Bursa Queen. So she's also not to be underestimated, of course. Ooh, and that is an important one. Good. Take a look. First and foremost... Construction of this shadow chamber should allow us to better break down and analyze all the aliens. We gotta continue excavation. So that one is running very well. Secondly, we always wanted to have another power relay here. Once that is built, we can transition and free up some time, uh, some space here. And we wanted another Psy Lab. Uh, Resistance comms is already on the way. And then Shadow, uh, Shadow Lab, uh, definitely. So, yeah, the build starts to uh, look just like the one that I mentioned. Powered armor, five more days. It is going in the right direction. We're almost heading to the end game, boys. Commander, we're picking up an emergency transport. And there's an ambush. I can play that off screen. It's not interesting. And we're going to uh, join back into the mission right after we're done with that. All right, and we are back. So, uh, no, thank you. Exactly. That is what we were looking for. Got a promotion and we located her stronghold. Uh, that is even better. That one is good. Lightly uh, wounded soldiers can be sent into combat is exactly what we need on this run. It is actually a really, really, really good order. Oh, that is a fantastic one. Alright, and finally we can infiltrate her stronghold. Unfortunately, the only one who could lead that assault is Hawkbite himself, which would take him out for 16 days. Uh. Oh boy, that's not good at all. We don't have enough um, null lances yet anyway, so probably not a good idea to do that. That one here for the dodge isn't too bad. For the resistance contacts, it's also not too bad. Um, that's a good reward. Scientist is definitely also not a bad reward. But maybe we're also just continuing to locate his stronghold. To be honest, it's probably the wiser choice. We got quite a few specialists, right? Yeah. So Sonar should try to get to Major so that we can use him in order to get to the strongholds. We can't just send him on a mission. Okay. And... Let's just send Jammer here, why not? Zirkim has fallen a bit behind. Um, maybe this here can, can get him back on track. So overall, I think that that's also a good um, alternative. Just getting, um, getting more influence uh, with each of the regions as well. Um, currently still got 500 supplies, I think very soon, let's just see, very soon we would have a supply drop. Yeah, but I rather would like to have uh, the best armor in the game. 
then to upgrade uh, the to get an, an additional resistance order. Although resistance orders are nice, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's we actually quite helpful. Running the black market. Maybe she can help us out restocking the bar. Okay, well, that here is going to be our mission because I do not want Barrier to go through. And there's a high level of psionic enemies, which is going to not work very well for us. We got another 100 interleave event. Holy moly, that is not bad. Yeah, and that one here is completely useless. Okay, yeah, we're probably going to do psionic storm. Um, or Operation Spider Fort. Uh, very difficult means we're very likely going to run into the Warlock as well. None of the alien rulers is left over. Yep, so I'm fine with that. Let's take a look what we could build. Commander. We cannot yet build armor. So that one... We're still waiting. Gremlin Mark II would be a nice upgrade. And I think instead of like going religiously for that armor... Let's instead get a few smaller upgrades and maybe get the armor just a few days delayed because we're pretty close to an, uh, to a month end. So Gremlin Mark II is good. It will give us better hacking capabilities. None of the weapons are needed. I, uh, Onyx Ripjack is great, but we're not using the Skirmisher a whole lot. The McBeacon would be fantastic. Mind Shield would be absolute fantastic. We're missing the corpses though. I've been digging through some of the old data files Central has been holding onto since before the war. I keep running across. Yeah, and we don't need to yet upgrade uh, the Proving Grounds. That's uh, not the Proving Grounds. Uh, the what is it called? Uh, the Resist String, of course. Um, that will cost us a hundred. We're okay with. Uh, the power that's not the problem i'm not so okay though with 100 i'm still in the range of maybe purchasing the plated armor and that's i think only four more days off no three more days okay almost there uh null lens will finish towards the end of the month which is fine so dark tarnaxus would have that and maybe we're even going to get it um, on edgar alien poe as well other than that, resistance comms will go up. That will give us plenty of um, expansion potential. The power relay here will go up, so that's fine. The second Psy lab might not be too bad, just to train those Psykers. And yeah, other than that, I think we're fine. Um, we soon got another, um, another facility in our reach. Uh, so that should be totally good. And we got a bond level up. Oh yeah, Hogbite and uh, Roby. But that's not going to happen yet. Uh, we need you on the mission. Good. That brings us to the end of today's episode, guys. A little bit longer one, um, but hopefully one that you enjoyed. If you liked it, leave a comment down below and don't forget to like the video. Both of that uh, helps the channel to grow and uh, that would make me very happy if you'd support it. We see each other in two days. Uh, with that, take care, gentlemen, and see you. Bye-bye.